Do you see? Like, this is just crazy to me. Hey, this is Joe from Personas, and in this video, we're gonna explore mix effects in Studio One Professional. Back in the pre-digital days, if you wanted to mix a song, what would you do? You would send all those channels through some sort of analog mixing console. And those consoles weren't perfect. They wouldn't just give you whatever you plugged in was what you got out. They would add things to the signal and change the signal. Three main ways that it did that was, one was noise. Having all those circuits times 24 or 48 channels is going to add noise to your signal. The second was crosstalk, where the bass guitar is on this channel and the kick drum is on this channel and if you soloed the bass you'd hear the kick drum and if you soloed the kick drum you'd hear a little bit of the bass the channels were cross talking with each other which is if you grew up in a digital system that's just bonkers to think about but that's the way it was so you had to kind of plan even where you placed your channels accordingly so that it would not cause much problems and then the final way was just different consoles had just different sounds. You've got circuits, tubes, op amps, transformers, and all the other gadgets and filters and stuff that go from the top of the channel till it comes out the fader at the bottom that would add to the sound of the console. Now, I would imagine the goal was to make them sound as clean as possible, especially in the beginning, but these added things were just kind of a byproduct of the technology of the time. Fast forward to today, we can mix in a pristine digital audio system where there is zero noise, zero crosstalk, and zero coloration, and we find ourselves missing the cool things that would happen when you mixed through those systems. So you've seen these plug-in manufacturers come up with uh, platforms that will kind of revert back and go from a perfect pristine digital system, digital sound, back to something that's a little more messed up like we used to have. And that's what we have built into Studio One Professional with our mix effects engine and the console shaper plugin that comes with Studio One Pro. Think of it this way, um, I don't know this for a fact, but I have a sneaky suspicion back in the early days of electric guitar, they weren't thinking about anything more than I just want my guitar to be louder. There is a horn section. Horns are very loud. I want to be as loud or louder than the horns. So they figure out what technology to amplify the signal. And as they start to drive and get, you know, push that technology to its limits, the sound would no longer stay clean. You wouldn't hear just the sound of the guitar. You would hear extra sounds with it. Overdrive, distortion. It wouldn't be a clean transfer of signal from one thing to the next. And I imagine the first few people were just face palming themselves saying oh I just want a clean guitar sound fast forward to today and you don't find a pure clean guitar sound almost anywhere even in the most um, kind of conservative types of music where there's electric guitar there's still some amp tone there there's a little bit of overdrive a little bit of grit a little bit of color that happens to the sound if I were to plug in my Telecaster or 335 straight into the interface and play and not do anything to it probably wouldn't be something anybody would want to listen to. We've grown accustomed to that imperfect system. I mean, look, we've got a guitar amps over here. That is a terrible, terrible way to amplify sound. It distorts. It doesn't have a lot of top end, but it sounds amazing on guitar. Wouldn't be great for a PA system, but works great on guitar. So that's the idea here. We're, we're integrating analog ideology, analog technology into a digital system. All right, let me show you how it works. Okay, if you open up your mixer, you may have noticed already at the top of your buses, at the top of your main mix bus over here and at the top of any buses that you've created, you'll see this mix effects. Now, at first glance, you might think that just means plugins, right? There's mix effects here and then there's my fat channel plug in there or my pro EQ there. That's actually not what it is. The inserts has to do with this. So these are inserts in the insert channel, also known as plugins. Mix effects is a completely different thing entirely. If we click on that, you'll see console shaper shows up. And if you're a Persona Sphere member, you also get CTC1, or you can purchase that separately if you're not a Sphere member. Um, but console shaper gives us this option to turn our digital console here into more of an analog console and get some of that benefit. So I'm gonna do it actually here on my main mix bus. I'm gonna select mix effects and select console shaper and you'll see this pop up. And if you were paying really, really, really close attention, you might have seen something else happen. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna take this mix effects off for a second, okay? And pay attention to these channels over here. Just, especially this like, just above the faders. Watch what happens when I add mix effects. 
Did you see that? Suddenly there's a, gr there's a green sort of a light indicator on all these channels. That corresponds to the green, the lime green color that I made my master fader to show this to you. So he, that, that gives you a little hint that what I did on the master fader is affecting all of those channels that are feeding into it. Let's talk about that a little bit more. So you open up Console Shaper and it looks just like a, a regular or albeit very simple plugin. You've got drive, you've got noise, and you've got crosstalk. Um, but you've also got this pass through button and that's what triggered, if we scroll down, these lights to come on on the individual channels. With pass through on, it is taking essentially the settings that we have here and it's applying them to all the individual channels in our mix. Whether it's a 12 channel mix or we've got 100 tracks, suddenly with one click, with one plugin, we're now applying this console sound to all of those channels. So what does that sound like? Well, let me just dial it in. Let's, let's add in a little bit of noise. You can hear it, look. You hear that? It's probably too much, but a little bit of noise, and you, you can go back and forth. They, they say sometimes that noise adds some pleasingness to the mix. Let's do that, and then let's add a little bit of crosstalk where the channels are talking with each other. So let me turn this off for now and hit play, and then I'll turn it on. And you'll note there's a difference in sound here, and it applies across the entire mix. This isn't processing on our mix like a regular mix bus plugin. This is actually processing that's happening on the individual channels and the buses that they feed into. Like this is causing some crosstalk between two individual channels and creating what we are lacking in a digital system of that sort of a sound of an analog console. So let me hit play. I'll let it play for a couple of bars without console shaper. Then I'll unbypass it and you'll hear it with console shaper. Okay, here we go. But something's there. And I act like Okay, I did not expect that to go quite that dramatically, but it's it's doing, so there's a couple of things happening here. First, it's applying a little bit of that drive, right? A little bit of, if you were to plug into an analog console and drive the input, it would warm up the sound and would eventually distort if you went as far as you can go. So it's adding some of that to every channel. Um, it's also compensating for that a little bit so we don't clip anything, and it's acting kind of like analog summing in that it's driving each channel a little bit harder, but it's not driving it so hard that it starts to clip everything digitally it's kind of all being tamed down by the same system that's driving it up, right? It's kind of got a sort of a gain compensation there. You notice the mix didn't really get any louder when we turned it up, but it, the tone of it changed, right? Um, now let's see what happens when I crank this up even more. You'll notice it just starts to, I mean, the sound just starts to change dramatically. Here we go. But something's there. And it, to me, it's it's bonkers to me what this does because it's clearly, it's affecting the level of my drum channels and it's affecting how they're hitting the drum mix bus. Like it's, it's causing like the room mics got shoved down a little bit and the snare mic got tightened up a little bit. But it's not a compressor plugin, but it's affecting how those plugins feed my my compressor on my drum my drum mix. Let's check out what the levels do when we hit play on this. But something's there And I act like I don't care You see the snare drum is a little bit louder now that we've added this. So it's just doing a lot of stuff under the hood. And rather than getting super caught up and knowing exactly what's happening and getting super tweaky, that's just not who I am. I like to throw this on a mix, push the knobs up, not crazy amount and just listen to what happens and it's sometimes it's wild the difference that you'll get um, and I'll usually do this towards the beginning of a mix when I've set my static mix and I will turn this on and just see does it make it better or worse and almost always it makes it better and then I just leave it on it's as if I took my mix to another console and said mmm that sounds nice now if you uh, own CTC1 or if you're a Persona Sphere member you get CTC1 included with your membership then you have access to even more consoles so you have this tabbed across the top 
top give you three very different consoles with actually a bunch of different settings. You can adjust the character, the overall master volume. There can be a noise gate. You can crosstalk, all that jazz. So let's just start with crosstalk. Um, and we'll turn this knob up to about six like we had before, and you'll see it adjust on all three settings. And just very quickly, I'm gonna show you how I would use this. I wouldn't get super tweaky about it. I would just click each one and see which console my mix sounds best through and go from there. So let's do that real quickly. But something's there, and I act like Do you see? Like, this is just crazy to me. It sounds like three different mixes, and all I did was change what console I'm running the mix through. So if you've read Sound on Sound, and you see people talking about, oh, remember the way that Neve sounded when we mixed through it, or that SSL console, that this is somewhat what they're talking about. It's this idea that as I ran it through, the way the channels intermingled together, the way they interacted with the components of that circuitry, the way they blended together at on the bus that came out the master output, all of that contributed together, little bits and pieces added up to a really cool sound. And now we can do that instead of having to have three consoles set up and patch things into each console to see which one I wanna mix through, which sounds like a whole lot of work. Um, we can now very quickly say, mm, I'll try the classic console today. Mm, the custom one is almost always my favorite. It just gives it this beef, but maybe the mix is too beefy. So then the tube one that comes out a little bit brighter than everyone else can be a very cool option. Um, this, it seems super advanced and super complicated, but I'd, I <laughs> I trigger this like a Neanderthal. I come in and I say, mm, this one sound good, and then I just turn it off and don't touch it again. So I go to like six, I have a little bit of crosstalk, I may or may not put noise on there, and I listen, I pick one that I like, I turn it off, and I literally never open the mix effects again, the entire mix. Now I'm just mixing through that cool sounding console, and like, the, the mix effects maybe helps me get a little closer to the mix that I want before I add plugins, or if I forget about it and do it late in the mix, it just adds that extra level of awesome and polish over the top that maybe I was missing. So if you haven't checked this out, if you own Studio One Pro, you have Console Shaper. If you don't, uh, if you want the CTC One plugin, you can buy that from our shop, or you can join Persona Sphere, which gives you access to that and all the other cool exclusives, like the entire Fat Channel collection, the VT1 processor, all that cool stuff uh, is included with your membership as well. Either way, if you haven't tried out Mix Effects, definitely try it out. It could be just the thing your mixes have been missing. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.